Hello and welcome to Panorama News. We're bringing you the latest in politics, economics and sports. I'm Dina Mamdouh and I'm going to start off with the main political segment. President Fatah Sisi held talks with Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli and Minister of Trade and Industry Naveen Gemia on Tuesday. Presidential spokesman Ambassador Bassem Radi said President Sisi followed up on efforts exerted by the Ministry of Trade and Industry to broaden local industrialization and develop exports. In this context, President Sisi directed to continue encouraging the establishment of industrial complexes as well as working to benefit them in supporting young investors in small and medium industries. The head of the state also instructed to provide more job opportunities and facilitate financing necessary equipment and machinery for investors. The president gave his directives to provide all means of support for the development of Egyptian exports and enhance their access to various foreign markets. For her part, uh, Minister Gemia presented the executive position for completing the system of industrial complexes in all governorates in terms of construction, privatization and operation. President Fatah Sisi stressed the solid historical bilateral ties with Kuwait at all levels and Egypt's firm stance on supporting the security and stability of Kuwait and the Gulf region. This came uh, the president's meeting, uh, his meeting with Mohammed Jassim El Sakr, the chairman of the board of directives and the Kuwaiti Chamber of Commerce and Industry, who hailed the comprehensive development in Egypt and the economic reform process. The details. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi received on Tuesday Mohammed Jassim El Sakr, chairman of the board of directors of the Kuwaiti Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Presidential spokesperson Ambassador Bassem Radi said during the meeting, President Sisi conveyed his greetings to His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Sabah, Emir of Kuwait, and Sheikh Mishal Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Sabah, the Crown Prince of Kuwait. President Sisi stressed on the solid historical relations between Egypt and Kuwait on all levels and Egypt's firm position on supporting the security and stability of Kuwait and the Gulf region which is part of Egypt's national security. The president also affirmed his full support to enhancing bilateral trade and joint investment projects between the two countries. Sisi reiterated the government's keenness to regularly communicate with Kuwaiti investors and overcome any obstacles they may face. For his part, as Sakra conveyed to President Sisi greetings of his Kuwaiti brothers, stressing on the strength and privacy of relations between the two nations, and Kuwait's appreciation of the pivotal role Egypt plays in the region. The Sakr praised the comprehensive development witness in Egypt under the leadership of President Sisi, which is combined with economic reform proceeds and the provision of attractive investment environments. Presidential spokesperson Ambassador Bassem Rodi said the meeting witnessed discussions on ways to support the Egyptian Kuwaiti Business Council, which enhances communication and interaction between businessmen of the two countries. The meeting was attended by the Minister of Trade and Industry, Naveen Gehman. Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri held talks in Cairo on Tuesday with the Fatah Central Commerce Secretary Jibril El Rajoub over the latest developments in the Palestinian territories. Foreign Ministry spokesman Ahmad Hafiz said the meeting also tackled Cairo's support for the Palestinians. Efforts to revive the stalled the Middle East peace process for the establishment of a sovereign Palestinian state also topped the agenda of the talks. Minister of Defense and Military Production Mohammed Zaki attended the signing ceremony of the two memorandums of understanding on military cooperation between Egypt and South Korea and a contract for the joint manufacturing of the K9A1 EG uh, holster with the South Korean company. Lieutenant General Ahmed Khalid, the Deputy Minister of Defense and the Commander of the Strategic Command and General Supervisor of Military Industrialization, signed the two MOUs in cooperation with the fields of defense, industry and logistical support and another memorandum of principles organizing cooperation in the field of defense, research and development in order to coordinate and exchange military experiences between the two countries. Mr. Zaki conveyed the greetings and appreciations of President Sisi to attendees, stressing that the General Command of the Armed Forces attaches great importance to military industrialization and development of armament system being one of the most important components of the armed forces military power. For his part, the South Korean minister expressed his great happiness for the military cooperation with Egypt as a major regional power and said 
He was looking forward to the next stage to witness more joint military cooperation and coordination between the two countries. The signing took place in the presence of South Korean Minister of Defense uh, Kang in who as well as number of leaders of the armed forces and the South Korean ambassador to Egypt. Egypt has received the first uh, shipment of uh, Evershield medicine which is developed by the AstraZeneca pharmaceutical company for coronavirus uh, patients. The new medicine is a long-acting antibody combination aimed to address cases suffering from severely compromised immunity. The health ministry stressed that any coronavirus medication approved internationally must be subject to swift studies in Egypt before endorsing it and making it available in the market. Egypt has started producing uh, the medicine for mild and moderate coronavirus patients. The World Health Organization chief warned on Tuesday that it is too early for countries uh, to either declare victory over COVID-19 or give up attempts to halt transmission. Speaking to reporters, the WHO chief said it is premature for any country to either surrender or declare victory. The UN Health Agency chief pointed out that since Omicron was first spotted in southern Africa, 